Oh man, look at all this right here. Oh, there's a bass right there. I guarantee that's a bass. Look at that thing. Pretty cool. What's going on guys? This is Gene Jensen and today we're going to go around and stare at my fish finder and I'm going to point out fish, what is a bass, what is a crappie, what's shad, show you how to find them and uh, show you what else is on the fish finder. It's going to be pretty cool so stay tuned. All right, so like I said in the intro, um, right now we're going to focus on uh, on finding fish. And as we as we do this, I'm going to point out or kind of give you an educated guess on what species of fish they are and uh, and uh, how I want how I go about identifying or at least giving somewhat of an educated guess. So let's let's go ahead and jump into it. So right here, I'm sitting still. See, 0.2 miles an hour, so I'm not going very fast. And we've got a school of bait fish that's swimming just to the right of the boat. Here's left. Here's right just to the right of the boat. And you notice how everything's really, really long. It's because one, I'm sitting still, and two, they're not moving very fast. And so they're just barely swimming under the boat and it just looks elongated. And, uh, and so just understand that if you're not moving or if you see a picture of a boat not moving and you see these long skinny lines, it's typically because they ain't going, they ain't going anywhere and the signal just keeps, uh, keeps pinging off the same fish. Now here's that same school of fish to the right and they're suspended off the bottom that's why you see all the space up underneath them all right we're going to keep going around I and mean, we're pretty deep right now we're 35 feet deep and uh and this is kind of what i do when i'm using uh, forward facing sonar when i've got active target on or getting ready to use active target and i'm zooming around with my with my uh side scan looking for balls of bait fish with bass that are around them now i want you to notice all this interference and i just turned my trolling motor off this means that I've got my trolling motor wire too close to my electronics wire, and that's something I'm gonna have to fix in this boat. Uh, the only time that you don't get that interference is one, when they're separated, and two, when it's on high or turned completely off. So you're just gonna see that interference um, until I can rewire the boat and get things moved around a little bit. Just stuff moved and, and they got too close to each other. So, but I can still see what I need to see. All right, so we've got actually three different pods of bait fish. One, two, three. Uh, this one is actually the, actually this one's the closest to us because we just saw it on the, on the down imaging and the, and the regular sonar. And then these are a little further away and here's another ball. And these are, these are threadfin shad. I know this lake, I know the bait fish that are in it, but um, you can see they're very, very tiny, tiny dots all mixed in together. And that's a tight ball of threadfin. A lot of times they get like that when they're spooked or they've got a, bit, a bass around them. But over here in this deep water, you notice this is where all the bass are. And, and by looking at the down imaging in the, in the regular sonar, you can tell what depth that they're at when you go over top of them. This really, I don't get a whole lot of information about depth, but this I do. So they're in about 20 feet of water. I have no clue what that is right there. I think that's a bridge. Yep, that's an old, uh, it's not really a bridge. It's got a little culvert right here and a road bed that goes up into a pocket, I think. Huh, it's the first time I've gone over at that angle and seen it that good. You can see the creek channel coming underneath it, so I'm sure that's a bridge with a roadbed. But I don't get all excited about that deep water, cool structure that was man-made and that kind of stuff like that, um, unless the bass are really, really deep. And a lot of times on these lakes and, and a lot of lakes, they don't go that deep. So except in the winter time and the heat, heat of the summer, if the thermocline is, is deep enough. All right, so as we're looking for bait, so right here, I've got a bluff wall to my right. That's why it's so hard. And I can look over to my right and say, hey, it's a really, really steep. That's a tree that's hanging off, of, that's leaning, that's falling off the bluff wall. And there's another tree right there. I mean, that kind of stuff is so easy to miss. Now look right here, you got a ball of bait fish and two fish right there. So let's turn around. And that was to my left. I'm gonna try to guess at about where they're at. I'm gonna, I'm turning. And I'm heading straight back to where I think they are. And I've got 100 feet. I can see uh, this is, what, 40 feet, 35 feet deep. So 100 minus 35, um, whatever that is, 70, 65, 65 feet out to the side and left and right. So I'm heading over that way and see if I can scan past them again. There's another fish right here, and it's all by itself. I look for bass when, when, they're, when they're chasing balls of bait fish or bait fish out in, out in the open. I look for signals that are, are near... Uh, balls of bait because a lot of times they'll just follow them around see this right here all right so we're coming along the edge of a bluff wall right here and there's a tree that's hanging down and another one right there that's hanging down on the edge of the bluff wall the bluff wall is about 40 feet away okay and then we're coming along this is all rock off to the right i'm actually going along a a, a, a dam right now riprap dam 
So that's all that is, just chunk chunk rock. And it's on my right, I'm going right on the edge of it. See, it's, it's underneath my boat. Both of these signals are underneath my boat. And I'm right along the, the deep edge of it. And I don't expect, it's hard to see fish in here unless they're suspended. And so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for little dots that are just barely off of that line right there. Cause that's that, if they're, if they're up off the bottom, you'll see them um, at least, at, at least if they're four feet in, you'll see a little dot. Like here's one right there that's suspended, but it's, it's probably shadow wise. It's probably right here. Hard to tell. It's just one of those things where if you see dots, there's fish in the area. Uh, hard to tell whether they're bass or not hard to tell exactly where they're at because there's so many shadows right here you can't see and typically when you see something suspended off there if it's like clear clean bottom you can look over and see a shadow if you zoom in a lot and uh, typically when I'm looking for real big detail I zoom I go down to 60 feet or even 50 feet to look for a lot of detail but I'm not I'm not looking for detail right now I'm just looking for stuff so this is a really, really long dam. And if I saw bait fish suspended out over top of the, over and out here, so there's a little fish right there. See the shadow? There's a shadow right there. Um, but if I saw, um, if I saw bait fish, then I would be more excited about fishing this riprap. But this is also where bluegill hide out and you can't see the bluegill in that riprap either. So it's still something good to throw at. And a lot of fish get caught off this riprap on this lake. So, all right, so see, look right here. I'm gonna zoom in. See if I can zoom in. Yep. Come on, let me zoom in. If I don't stop the boat, I'm gonna run into something. So I zoomed in. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. See that little dot right there? See that little bitty dot right there? That's a fish that's suspended somewhere along here above the riprap. Okay. It's not a very big fish, but that's kind of what you're looking for. All right, so look over here. You see all these little potholes and stuff like there, and how it's a little bit darker. It's also going downhill a little, so uh, that's that's soft bottom, and this is hard bottom. It's actually a drop or a uh, a ledge, as we call it. So I'm going to turn left, 45 degrees, and I'm going to go out deep. There's a little bit. Of, there's a tree or something hanging off on the edge. Okay, and then I'm going to turn a 90 degrees all the way back around. Okay, and I'm going to come out of this deep water. And I'm going to go over that ledge. Okay, see, look, there's that ledge, a little bit of rock on top. I expect there to be bass sometimes in, during the year in, oops, I don't want that. I want a clear cursor. I, don't, I expect bass to be along that area, so or along this, this edge. See, there's a lot of rock on the edge. It's because the silt can't settle on the edges. They, it, you know, gravity pulls, them, pulls it down to the bottom. So we just came up over a, over a ledge. And bass will hang out there. They hang out along that tree right there, and along that tree right there, and over here. See, we went all the way up to 10 feet. We're in what 25, 30 feet of water, and then we came on up. Now I'm turning left. I'm scanning the shallows. There's not anything up here. No bait. Don't see any. You know, might, that might be a fish right there, and that might be a couple of fish right there. Matter of fact, let's zoom in a little bit. To 60 feet, and I'll get. And this gives you a little bit more detail. And I'm gonna slow down a little. Okay, all this is hard, rocky bottom. It's like a, a rocky vein and stuff like that. That's all rock. And be something I drag a Carolina rig or a jig through, right on the edge of that drop. See, it's dropping off, right down into deep water. Almost looks like an old, uh, old house foundation, but it's not. So I expect that to play in certain times of the year. That'll be a place the bass hang out. Still looking for fish though. All right, so look right here. Here's a ball of bait fish. Let me zoom in. Ball of bait fish. Notice there's a few larger fish in here, and there's one out here. I can almost guarantee that's a that's a group of bass that are chasing bait fish out deep. And this is what those four facing sonar guys are. If you get your active, active target out and spin it around, you'll see those bass chasing that. And that's the kind of stuff they're looking for. And they're aiming, you know, the little bitty baits in the, with the spinning rods, all the fairy wands and, and jerk baits and stuff like that. You go out there and catch those fish. Oh, I can almost guarantee those are bass. So, and those are way off to the left. And I would have zoomed around and tried to find them and pinpoint where they're at and that kind of stuff. So let's keep looking. All right, so here's a cool one. All right, so these right here, these are one of three things. Gizzard shad, because we have large gizzard shad in this lake, not threadfin like we've been seeing. A school of crappie or bass. My bet is that that's crappie. See how tight they are? A lot of times bass will be 
either if they're in smaller groups and they're stacked up, they're usually a little bit more spread out than this, but these might be bass. But my guess is, is that they're crappy. Uh, and I would go through and I'd throw a bait in front of them and see how they react on on a, on, on a active target. So, but they were a little bit off to our right. And uh, maybe I'll do that in another video. I wanna show you guys some more stuff before we go. But, uh, but yeah, that's one of the three on this lake. All right, so we just went over a small group of bait fish and there's some larger fish around it. And those are probably bass as well. We may come back out here before the video's over, see if I can catch one or two of these using a, using, using an active target. But anyway, I'm gonna come up. We're gonna go up, up, on, up a hill a little bit and we're gonna look at some fish attractors. I wanna kinda show you how easy they are to miss and then how to mark them on your, on your map or on your GPS. All right, see this right here? See the shadow? There's a little bit of bait around it. So that's a fish attractor. And the shadow goes out this way, right? And so what I wanna do, and there's another one coming up, is I wanna mark the base of that shadow. Okay, and I mark it right there and I say new waypoint. And this is my fish attractor symbol that I use. And then it's marked. So here's another one and it's laying down. Again, base of the shadow, new waypoint, save. Clear cursor. And then there's another one. There's a bunch of them right here. But that's how you mark them. And that will be on your map as well. And you get the most accurate thing. And the nice thing about a kayak and the way I've got this set up is my transducer is directly under this unit. This unit is where the GPS antenna is. The, the, uh, the, the uh, transducer is right underneath it. So my marks are exact in a big boat when the transducer is in the back of the boat and the, the, uh, the, the units on the console, you have that distance that you're off unless you set it offset and go out and do all those settings. But anyway, pretty cool. I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let me change something real quick. I probably already had that one marked, I did. But anyway, we're gonna go back over to that, that fish finder or that uh, fish attractor and I'm gonna go over, there's one we just went over right there. But, I'm gonna go over it and look what it looks like on, on down imaging. Right, I'm gonna slow down a little bit. Right, those two fish suspended right there. These are my summer and wintertime crappy fish attractors right here. So there's, there's those two right there. Okay, that's a little ball bait fish we went over that's all the way on the bottom. Okay, there's that one. Actually, I don't have that one marked, but we just went over this one right here. Okay, so they're pretty substantial, but if you remember looking at them from a distance on the, on the side scan, they were pretty small. That first one, it didn't look like much, but look, it is. It's, it's actually uh, made by the company, uh, the American Fish Tree. Great American Fish Tree is what that, the company that makes that fish attractor. All right, so right here, we're coming into the mouth of a, a huge spawning bay or a major spawning bay on this, on this lake. Okay, and so I'm, I'm really looking close. There's a, there's a ridge. I don't know what, whether that was an old road bed or what. It's just an old, it's a ridge down at 20 feet deep. You know, a little bitty pot of bait fish that are actually over here. And they're fairly shallow. And you notice I haven't seen a whole lot of stuff out deep. I have seen some stuff, but not a whole lot. And so we're gonna come in a little bit shallower into a spawning bay since it's that time of the year and see what we can see. A little something right there. Little brush pile right there. So there's a bluegill bed, old bluegill bed on, on the edge of a drop or road bed. So there's some fish right there. And this is the kind of places it gets pretty shallower in 10 feet of water coming into a spawning bay. And this rock right here and that stuff like that is the kind of places that a big bass will hang out during, you know, getting ready to spawn, but the weather's pretty bad. You know, here's some, here's some fish attractors. You see the little shadows, the base of it's right there. And, uh, but that's the kind of places that they'll stop and hang out until the weather gets good. Another little something, now we're coming up, actually we're coming up a, a known road bed. Got a bunch of stuff on it, a bunch of fish attractors and the old gravel from the road bed. That kind of stuff, it's actually a, a asphalt road bed. But and then it goes back down and you see where the silt has, has settled down here in the bottom. There's a, a old bluegill or shellcracker bed and there's fish in those, those beds. I may, let me mark that. And I mark this kind of stuff with a fish symbol because I'll go back later. And what I love about Lawrence's is I can go back in later and pick which fish symbol I want to delete everything on the, on the, uh, on the uh, GPS or on the map on. And so, cause those fish aren't going to be there forever. So when I'm marking fish, I use the fish symbols 
and uh, Lawrence is one of the few is one of the few systems where you can go in and say, okay, I want to delete everything that is this symbol right here. It makes my life a whole lot easier. All right, so we're not moving right now. I didn't want to run into anything. I know we're about to get really shallow, so I'm gonna zip back around. All right, so what I want to do here is I want to show you guys some submerged timber. It's mainly just trunks of trees, and you guys that know this lake I'm on will uh, know where I'm at. So there's a couple we just barely missed, and we might bump into a few. I almost did just just now. So we're going right through some submerged timber, and uh, typically I'm looking for bait fish that are suspended. Sorry, the camera won't hold still when I'm moving around. I'm looking for bait fish that are suspended, um, but. I'm also looking at, I'm trying not to run into anything at the same time, but I'm going super slow. You know, I'm looking for things like this, see that white dot? That'd be a, a fish that's suspended off of one of those trees. You know, that's rock on the bottom or hard, hard spot on the bottom. Here's a tree laying down. Here's another tree that's laying down. We just went over or we're going over. There's two trees, one going this way, one going this way directly into the boat. You know, and you see this right here? This is a fish that's somewhere over here. Because I don't see it on the right, I only see it on the left. Really not a lot going on. We're, we got a massive cold front that just moved in and these fish are in a funk. So here's another fish that's suspended probably over top of that, whatever that is right there. It looks like a trunk of a tree. So there's another fish right there. No, as I just say fish, I don't know if they're bass or not. They're more than likely bass because that's right at the mouth of this spawning bay. And I would go and, 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 you know, at least fish the area a little bit, see if I can get one to bite. Okay, so I just turned all the way around. I'm going 180 degrees. Going the opposite direction I just was. So you'll see the same trunks on the right side now. Okay, I'm going to go to about 60 feet. I usually run between 60 and 100 feet. If I'm really scanning and, and you know, if I'm doing a lot of moving around and going really fast I, I, and looking for just major things, I'll have it on 100 feet and I'll be zoom zooming around. But uh, here, I'm, you know, as I get into these things that really require a lot of detail, I'll zoom in, which reduces my distance out, but it gives me more detail. And then I'll, uh, I'll just slowly scan. My favorite is between 1.5 and two miles an hour. Whew, there was another stump I almost hit, see it? <laughs> Hard to look at this and look up at the same time. So here's a roadbed we're going up. There's a culvert right there. It's one side of the culvert. We're going across the roadbed a little bit of an, at an angle. So the, culvert, the rest of it's right here on the left side. Another trunk of the tree we're almost hit. So I'm going to go up super shallow. And there might be some bass up here getting ready to spawn. I don't know. This cold water, though, this cold weather, though, has got them all funky. All right, so I am going to kind of try to keep the boat in about five feet of water. And shallow water's on my left, deeper water's on my right. Parallel in the bank. Trying to miss some stumps that are up here. And I'm just kind of looking for something that might hold a pair of bass that are getting ready to spawn. And I'm looking mainly to my left because like I said, four or five feet of water, they're not spawning out here yet because this is early, early. And if they're spawning, they're gonna be way up shallow. I'm gonna, nice thing about a kayak is I can lean to the right a little bit and get a better signal to the left side. And that's what I did right there, I leaned to the right. And right now I'm trying to miss some stumps. So I almost, I just, basically just killed the motor and I'm just drifting right now and look and see there's a little something right there there's a lot of, of like moss and stuff on the bottom and that's kind of what grass would look like but that's not the kind of grass I like to fish because it gets hung up all in your baits and things like that all right so I want you to look right here that's a good size we, we were going pretty slow and I turned at the same time but that's a good size fish right there and it's right on the outside of these stumps so that very likely could be a bass it's just kind of cruising out here or hanging out out here crazy but unless they're off the bottom you really can't identify them that hard or that easily you know that might be a fish sitting on the bottom and that might be a fish sitting on the bottom 
but uh, it's hard to tell the difference because there's just no shadow behind them. All right, so wind picked up and got a little bit uh, gnarly and cold. And so I'm gonna call it a day, but I hope you guys learned something from this video. I'm gonna keep doing them. Uh, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna try to do them once a week, if not three or four times a month, so you guys can get out in the water, look at the stuff on your fish finder and realize what it is and catch more fish. So like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel, let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go ahead and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.